I'm going to call this Board of Equalization, uh, the Board of Equalization meeting for today, um, Monday, March 13th, to order. Um, notice according to the Open Meetings Act was properly posted for this, this meeting on Thursday, March 3rd. Um, this is a three-member board at this moment. Two of us are present, Mr. Town and myself, Eleanor Thompson. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. And the first uh, order of business is going to be approval of minutes of the prior meeting, um, February 28th. Ample motion. I move to approve the minutes from February 28th, 2023. And I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now, for those of you who are present, we have um, four items on the agenda. And the way this works, and first of all, uh, is Mr. Atwood here? Or is it a man, woman? Me. Come up, you want to come up and sit. So for the rest of you who are here, just listen up. This is how this goes. So you're the taxpayer, and you are having a problem with your assessment <coughs> valuation. So we're going to hear from you first. Then we'll hear from the assessor. Then we're going to meet on Thursday and make a decision. We actually make the valuation based upon what we hear. There's a presumption that the um, assessor's uh, assessment or evaluation is correct. We can hear contrary evidence and it'll change our mind. The presumption is that their, their uh, evaluation is correct. Um, you will get a letter of our decision, depending on how quickly it gets sent out, there used to be if you mailed something by five o'clock one day and it was going to the in anywhere in Oklahoma, you'd get it the next day. That's out the window. So <laughs> you might would get it Saturday at the latest. You'll get notice on Monday. Okay. All right. So the first item is uh, the Board of Equalization item number eleven. We have Miss Taylor. I'm sorry, Miss Adler present. Address one six five one two. Tonka Trail, Edmond, is that correct? Yes. And it's residential, so we're here from you. Um, so I bought the house last year at 265,000, end of last year, October 7th. Okay. Um, and it was appraised for 291,500. Um, last year it was appraised for 250, they weren't able to tax that much because you can only go up 3%. So it was 228 was the taxable market value. So that's an increase of over $60,000 in one year. Um, I looked at all of the comparisons that they said my house was comparable to. <laughs> and many of them were sold beginning of last year when market was Crazy. out of <laughs> control. <laughs> um, but also many of them were not comparable to my house in um, the inside. Many of them have hardwood floors, intricate woodworking on the inside. Um, yards are much bigger than mine. And um, also some had three car garages. Mine is just a two car garage. Um, I did find many comparables that sold for two uh, sorry, 260000 or less in my block of Edmond that looked similar to my build. Um, I sent those in the first time, but they said they didn't um, count as comparables for some reason. Um, Did you say that your sales price was, your purchase price was 265000 Correct. Okay, one thing I didn't say, so you guys back there listen up. Um, we here are not concerned with your taxes. That's between you and Butch Freeman. We're only here concerned with valuation, okay? So, because I, I heard you mention the taxes or the taxable rate, the taxable base. There's two different items here. There's the market race and there's, there's the taxable. Yeah. We don't deal with the taxes. And I understand most people are concerned with 
their valuation affecting their taxes. We don't deal with that. We only deal with valuation of the property. Okay. Okay, but I want to make sure. So the market value last year was two fifty. Okay. Two hundred fifty thousand five hundred. Okay. Um, and this year they said it's two ninety one. Okay. But I bought it for two sixty five. <laughs> And then did I understand you to say that when you were in uh, negotiations for purchase, there had been an appraisal done on the property and the appraisal showed it at 291.5? You brought, where, where, where did I, okay. That's just what the assessor says. D did you have an appraisal done prior to your, your purchase? Um, you know, my mortgage company did, and I don't remember what that was. What was the asking price? 280. Oh, you were you were able to get a house below. Okay. These are market. I mean, garden homes, right? Is this that right. area of Fenwick that's yeah. kind of on the the south side? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, off of Fifteenth, like right off. Of right. 15th. Yeah. Now I'm familiar with the area. And Fifteenth and um, in between Penn and Western. Okay, it's on the like north right, side of the road. Right in the okay. Of and what's the square footage of your house? It's 1945. Okay. Okay. I hear from you, hear from the appraiser. So, yeah, we do have it on for 291.5. That's what we uh, sent out on the notice of decision. It was a $265,000. A uh, valid purchase in October of 22. Um, her home is 19 years old in the six comps that we pulled all within her neighborhood. All 22 sales are 19.17 years of age. Um, and the comps that she provided, there was one that was a 23 sale we couldn't use. There's two that are outside the neighborhood um, in Copper Creek that we could not use because um, all the comps that we provided are in her neighborhood. No, Bedford Circle's not in my neighborhood. We show it being in the neighborhood because we have no adjustments uh, made for it. Um, Bedford Circle's up there off of 169 to the left in that circle right below, okay. right to the left of your mouse. Right there, okay. Not down on that side, yeah. Okay. Is that another phase of the same addition? That, I don't even You know how you have phase one, phase two? Yeah, because so this love part is my phase. I don't think that, I don't know if that's been like the entirety of it there. It is. The, the dividing line is, if you go to the far left where you see the uh, undeveloped property, at the top of that, you go straight across, and that's the that's the boundary between Fenwick and Copper. I can't remember. The reason I know this, I used to be I was with Edmond Schools, and part of my area was transportation. And when we were doing, I saw this area develop over time, and we were they wouldn't. We made them connect over there, so it, it's barely within it, but it is within that neighborhood. That's there's 320 acres there. It's a whole. I mean, that house is the house that has all the intricate woodwork inside of it that doesn't look anything like my house. And the yard of that house is three times the size of my yard. Would are you, you on a cul de sac? No. Okay. Would you it's, think the, the others are comparable but if you throw that one out? I mean, I think. In your opinion? Some of the others are comparable. The one on 16712 Farmington Way, that one is identical to what my house looks like. That sold for 240 or 250. What was the square that footage? One's, that one sold for 250. It's 1958. It's just uh, 13 square feet over mine. Mm -hmm. But the layout of that one and the inside of it looks almost identical. And sale date of that one? That one was April 1st, 2022. Okay. And uh, we make adjustments for everything to get it to be exactly or as close to being to the subject property. and. We also have to take into effect that, you know, obviously it'll sell for at a certain date, but then we also have to account for market trend at the end of the year. So when you take all those adjustments 
and the market value as it trends plus the adjustments, you know, we get comps that currently support the value of where we have it at right now. Okay. And that's why we've arrived to the, what we have it at as right now. Okay. you have any more questions? Uh, no, I don't. Anything? I further? did have a question. Why, why were her comps disallowed? They just were... So I know one of them was in the 23 year. Which Correct. You and then there use. was two that were in Copper Creek that okay. we could not use because we actually had enough you had sales. This, okay. and, uh, you had a sample size big enough in <laughs> right there. Yeah. Okay. So are those ones over um, just north of 169th, not in like on all those roads? Because I had comps in there too. Yeah, we looked at every, uh, we looked at all the comps that you provided and only, like I said, only one was uh, Fenwick. Or two may have been Fenwick, but the so, others were. So the answer to her question is they're not in Fenwick. That's what you were asking, right? Right. I had some that were just right north of that 169th Street in those um, those roads there, like Platinum Lane and Bedford Drive. Those ones, but those weren't put into my comps that I received. Okay. Anything further from either of you? Ooh, nice pictures. That's my house. Right. Now, why are you calling? Let me see that. Why are you calling that a garden home? What is that? Um, it's Fenwick Garden Village. It's it's a. Um, they just call them garden homes because okay. they're so close together. They have a very small oh. backyard. Okay. Like for this example, this one right here, we have that one as Copper Creek <coughs> on 1809 176th. And this is also Copper Creek on Zinc Drive. one was sold this year but that sold last year also for two hundred and fifty thousand. right and we have to go with the most recent sale that we think is and that one says uh we got that one being for 23 so and that's why we've arrived at the value that we did that house sold tw twice in 12 months okay okay we're going to close the hearing on uh, veto room number 11, and you'll hear from us either uh, Friday, Saturday, or Monday. Uh, thank you for coming in. Okay. All right. Uh, Our chairman has stepped in, so we will go ahead and make a note of that. And then um, the person here with, is it Pafal Trust? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is BOE number nine. What's your name? Kenneth D. Fowl. Say it again. Kenneth D. Fowl. D. Fowl, okay. All right, let's put a P there. And this house is at 1116 Aberley Circle or in Arcadia. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so tell me about your, your. is this a house and land? It's, it's a house on two acres. Two acres. <coughs> and the square footage of the house? It's 4248. 42, okay, go ahead. So, the house um, in 2021, the market value was 725, 725,000. Then in 2022, went up another 100,000 to 825,000. And then for 2023, it's gone up to 960,000. Mm -hmm. um, there's been two homes that have been sold in the subdivision. There's 32 homes in this, this subdivision. Um, basically, one was in July. Um, it's comparable to my house, uh, kind of just in the living area, but it, it has elaborate pool and gardens and everything. I haven't done any upgrades to my house at all. Why not? <laughs> what What is uh, your subdivision called? Uh, Beaupre. Beaupre, okay. Oh, I, I know exactly where this is. It's just across from that uh, water yeah. plant there. My my son lives in 
uh, Chitwood Farms. Okay, yeah, it's just Thomas Tree. So um, the other house sold in, in August of this year, um, 4,115 square feet versus mine's 1448. Um, it sold for nine hundred and and twenty thousand, just like two hundred twenty three dollars a square foot. Um, our house, if you did that, would come out to be about nine hundred and forty thousand um, dollars versus the nine sixty. Um, but um, I just I just think that things are rising too too fast, um, you know. And you know, even when I kind of go to the sheet here for the, the county, it yes. talks about how many uh, houses, you know, or a million. To me, it's kind of like a race, maybe, to how many, how many homes can you make at a million dollars. But beyond that, um, what I wanted to show was, you know, these are, even though I have the house, these are like the streets oh, that we have in my neighborhood, you know. The builders don't put any type of uh, rebar or anything down. So, I mean, yes, they have the house, but then you have, you know, what's occurring to the streets in front of your house, which, which drives down, you know, drives down the value. And then you can see up there, see the water plant that's up there on to the left where all the red dirt is? Yes. So, they just initiated a $191 million um, Construction for a new water plant and um, doing some things to the lake, and so basically that whole area is just is just red dirt now, and so consequently, my house, my windows, everything is just covered constantly from that expansion and, and all this all this red dirt. So I mean, it's great to just put the value on. Everybody thinks the house is, but where it's sitting and what it's exposed to is, is to me, it's driving down the value. I mean, okay, the water plant for Lake Arcadia to supply water to Edmond. Yes, ma'am. Drinking water. So it's a hundred and ninety-one million dollar project. Mm -hmm. That's I, I would just tell you that I was involved in the land condemnations that created that lake, so I'm kind of familiar with the water issue. Yeah, it's a beautiful area, and they mm -hmm. talk about tree conservation, but they've gone in and just Ravage, ravage the area with from the trees. Am Does I that correct? That provide water to your property? No, sir. Okay. You're on a well. On a water well. Yeah. Your sale was in uh, November of 2016. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Your purchase, I should say, and you purchased it for 759,000. Yes, ma'am. And uh, what you bought was a built house on two acres, or did you? This is a custom bill for you. It was it was already built. It was already it just built. came into the neighborhood and it was for sale. Okay, and um, and I'm correct. 2016. Yes, ma'am. So November. you've been there six years. Yes, ma'am. And at this moment, you're asking that the valuation be seven hundred and eighty thousand seven hundred and ninety-one dollars. No, that was the, the tax. The tax value. Well, okay. What 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 are you asking us to set the value at? Nine hundred. $900,000. And the assessor is at nine sixty five hundred, so we're we're talking about sixty thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. And those pictures that you just showed us, did you show those to to, to the assessor during your informal? We sent the packet. You sent the packet. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so one of these days you're going to be able to pool and all that other stuff. I'm sorry, say again. One of these days you're going to build a pool and big fence and all that other stuff. There's only two of us, so um, probably not going to put a pool in. Oh, okay. So, kind of like just the green, the green grass. Okay. Mike. So yeah, they bought the property back in '16 for um, seven, or uh, excuse me, 759. We currently have it on for 960, 500. Uh, we did receive the uh, images of the street conditions and I spoke with a realtor that has done some work in this edition before and said that the city does not maintain the streets. The streets are the responsible of the homeowners. So they are in charge of keeping up with the maintenance and, and all that. Um, and we, we pulled up 
we pulled up four comparables uh, that sold all or something one in a couple in 21 and a couple in 22 and we currently uh, support a value of nine hundred sixty thousand five hundred dollars the median is just slightly above that but that's why we didn't budge on uh, lowering the value any the median is just slightly above nine yeah we have nine six or well, the current what we have it on is nine sixty five hundred the median is nine sixty six fifty two and the average age of the four comps that we did is 7.75 years old. And the subject is seven years old. And that's why we were not able to lower the value any at all. Okay, tell me one more time what the 22 valuation was. Yes, let me uh, pull that up for he you. He said, but I didn't write it down. Uh, eight hundred and twenty-five thousand. Okay. And like I said, we also have to, like I said, we have to factor in the time-adjusted sales price as of January first this year, which market trend is boosting those values up. Right. So, um, Mr. Default, if I offered you $960,500 for your house, would you take it? Yeah, if it was for sale. <laughs> okay. What's the gap between the uh, market no, value and the tax I, value? The only thing I would say then, uh, empathize with the streets. All the streets in my neighborhood are all so taxable as eight hundred neighborhood. Yeah, that's the current tax. Uh, the current tax. Okay. Luckily, they dedicated it to the city, so we got out of that. But you guys are stuck with fixing these streets. Uh, and that's a that's a consideration. Uh, I, I, am I right? You guys yes. are responsible for these yes. streets. Yeah. So you know, if you sell your house and people go through the homeowners' deeds and everything and see that they're responsible for the streets, I could determine whether somebody wants to buy the house or not. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Oh, I guess. I'm good. You're good? Okay. Anything further? No, ma'am. Okay. So you heard me tell the other lady that we'll be making a decision on Thursday. So Saturday, hopefully, you'll get a letter from us. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate oh, you all's yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, sure. Middleton. Oh, we're going to close the. Sorry, going to close the hearing on BOE uh, number nine. And now we're open the hearing on BO, BOE number fourteen. So, do you live at one seven five one seven? Is it Egret's Landing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, we'll hear from you. All right. Um, yeah, good morning, and thank you for. This opportunity, um, the assessor's value for this property, my my property here, was set at eight eighty five five hundred, and I think the closer value would be seven eighty two seven hundred based on comparable sales and a the appraisal at when it was sold. The appraisal that was done in July twenty two was at seven fifty seven, <coughs> and and then. The comparable sales came in at the 780 number. And what was the appraisal done for? Um, when I bought the property. Oh, okay. And that was what year? July 2022. Okay.
What's the square footage of your house? 35, 34. What was that? 3,534 square feet. Oh. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch your purchase price. <clears throat> the purchase price was 600000 but it was a non-arm's length transaction. Okay. What are you saying? Is, is this family inherited property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And how many sales? You, you have recent sales in your neighborhood? I do. Um, and after the informal hearing, the assessor came back with six properties. Um, and so I used their same process uh, for 22 properties with similar uh, square footage and came up with a median of that 780 number. Um, 782, 7. Mm -hmm. And those are all properties between 3,000 and 4,000 square feet that were sold in 2022. Okay. Mike? Okay, so yeah, uh, everything he, he said so far is correct. 700, or the invalid arm's length transaction purchase of 600,000 in June of 22. We currently have the value on it, $885,500. Request, he's requesting a value of 650,000. And we, the comps that we provided. Mark, don't want to ask you a question. He said that his ask was 782.7. Yeah, I revised the number after the informal hearing. Oh, uh, okay. So. Yeah, that threw me for a loop. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. The numbers I got. All right. All right. Okay. You said how much, what you're requesting? 782.7. Okay. So, yeah, we. We looked at the comps that he provided. Before you get going, he's he's changed his asking to seven eighty two seven hundred. Are you willing to accept that as value? We are not now. Okay. Um. So we ran some comps and we're using, you know, twenty twenty two sales and the adjustments on those are far less you know substantial opposed to as opposed to what he's provided and, and his comps do support a lower value but the problem is we're having to make significant adjustments compared to the adjustments that we're having to make on the comps that we provided um i mean we're there's one there's one adjustment that he provided that has over 200 grand worth of uh, adjustments that have to be made and we just compared the two and it shows that we have better comparables with less value and adjustments to support the current value. Where is this? Tell me, give me some boundaries for this. Rose Creek, it's the north side of Rose Creek okay. in the Deer Creek area. Okay. Yep, right here. Portland to 178th. Okay. Is that a cul de sac? No. Okay. Mike, tell me what you mean by adjustments. So any kind, like for example, the properties that we use are not exactly 3,534 square feet. So anytime there's less adjust or uh, less square footage or more square footage, we'll make you negative mean. or positive adjustments, and that's for like okay. your square footage, you know, quality. But the quality is the same in this, but like effective age or the, you know the age, because we have some that are. 14 years old and 17 years old will make certain percentage and value adjustments for those. Uh, fireplaces, you know, garage, um, you know, if one has a pool, one backs up to a lake, we'll make all the necessary adjustments. And then you factor in the market trend, <coughs> combine those together, and that's where we come up with an adjusted sale value. And this property is a lakeside property. Correct. So here's the water feature, and here's the house right here.
I also want to uh, point out that the <clears throat> or no, sorry, no, that was it. My, my apologies. Oh yeah, the average age of the six comps that we uh, that we used come out to be thirteen years old, and his is uh, fifteen years old. What was the evaluation in um, twenty January twenty two? I have seven hundred seventy thousand five hundred. What was it? Seven hundred seventy thousand five hundred. Will be a reset on sort of on the taxable because of the transaction. Correct. And if you want to take a look at that in detail, um, yes. I didn't hear what you said, Brett. Oh, I said it, this will be a reset on the. I know we don't look at the taxable, but that gives me an idea oh, of kind of where it's going. Right. Where it was and then where it's going on. The now, now, is your issue really valuation, or is your issue you worried about your taxes? Um, just valuation. Just valuation. We're trying to make it as fair as possible and get the most accurate sure. uh, price for what the right. property is. Because you heard me say we don't deal with yes. this. Okay. Yeah, we don't deal with the taxable value. Yeah. We <laughs> simply yeah. go with market value. Yes. Right. What yes, the arms length transaction would be uh, fair. And you've already admitted the purchase you made was to a family inheritance. Yes, sir. So that's not a yeah, not not part of this. Not an arm's length <coughs> transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you got more questions? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that yeah, I did the twenty-two comparable sales and. Yes, some of them are not, um, has bigger adjustments, but I would also point out that two of the adjustments that the assessor used um, were over 100,000 as well. And there were multiple properties that were also close that they did not use. For instance, this one here was only 36,000 adjusted and had a price per square foot of 213. Which, um, which one are you referring to? Which um, do you, did you guys get? We yeah, have you, we here. have your packet. Uh, it would be number eighteen here. That one was two thirteen, um, and the assessor has it at two fifty a square foot. Um, and there's other properties as well. And with the appraisal done in July, also had that at seven fifty seven. Um, and this was done by third party. So was the appraisal done, it wasn't done for purposes of the sale, right? Um, it was just to conduct a fair market value for it. Was bank required? Yep. Cuts of loan? Yep. from a Saturday or Monday at the latest, probably. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're going to close the hearing on BOE number 14. Proceed to BOE number 18, Mr. Sterling. Yes. <coughs> it's your property at 15901 Hardwick. Yes, it is. Okay. 
So you've had the advantage of seeing the other three hearings, so you know what's about to happen. So let me hear from you. Well, I purchased this house in June of this year. Or last year. Last year. And uh, it was at the extremely high end of the market when I purchased it. I had been searching for a home for over a year, maybe about three, four offers on homes, lost them all. My wife was getting to the point of total discussion and found this house that we said, this house will do. And we offered $30,000 over the asking price. What was the purchase price? 260. What? 260. Well, why do I have 29500 That's what I bought it for. Oh, it was asking price was 260 Asking price was 260 It was in a bidding war, and if you wanted a house and you needed a house, we had to go with it. price was what? $290,500. Oh, okay. Tell me the square footage of the house. That square footage. Uh, 20... 2034, I believe. Okay. After I purchased the house, I found that at the closing, I found out some things that I didn't really like very well, but I went ahead and closed anyway. The property basically has, I wanted to put a shed on it, and find out that it's got an easement of 10 foot across the whole west side. It has a garage, it's a three-car garage, a small bay is not accessible with a car. It has a rock wall in front of it. The property is squeezed in such that the rock wall basically, you can't take the rock wall down, we don't own the rock wall, it's on the way, it's away. And, uh, so I showed the uh, friends and pictures of the basic things about the house that uh, really <coughs> appreciates its value. So we paid well over the market value. And I don't think that I should be penalized for being stupid. There was a lot of that going on last year. Yeah. Yes, it was really tough. Crazy. And each house we bid on, we bid well over the asking price and lost them all. Wow. So give me some um, mile section closest to. Only comparables that were in. You pull up the map. The access yeah. we used was out of the area. Out of the area or out of the addition? Out of the addition. Okay. And um, the only sale I could find in the addition was 16009 Heather Court, which is about three doors away. It has a market value of 258500 for this year. And, uh, and where'd, you get, where'd you get that figure? Zillow or something? No, no, no. no. Page. The assessor's office. Oh. Okay. This house is comparable. It has same square footage, same acreage, uh, got a little better location, it's not trapped, and it's got a value of 258. And it's just two. And I'm at 301. So I'm thinking that my property should be valued somewhere around 260. But I, okay, the paperwork that you filled out, I have two hundred and eighty thousand. Is that wrong? You changing your mind today? Uh, oh, two hundred sixty. No. No. Was it maybe? Yes, I think you're right. You're right. Two eighty. Two eighty is what I'm asking for. So you you want us to value your property at less than you bought it? 
That is correct. Six, Six months, months later. later. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Because okay. you know we're looking at valuation as of January 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which would be basically six months after you bought it. Okay. And you're doing that because you're telling us what the bidding war atmosphere was like last year. Yes, and I have no alternative. So. And the, uh, I, I also ran some pictures of some of the defects that I found in the property. Uh, so if I wanted to sell it at this point, it'd be ruined. I would not get that kind of money for it. Because of the defects or because of the market or both? Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll hear from Mike. So yeah, the purchased it for two ninety thousand five hundred in June of twenty two. Uh, we currently have a median value of three twelve five hundred six, and the average age of the five comparables we use is twenty one point eight zero years old. His age is his current is twenty one. Um. We didn't get any of these pictures during the informal, so these were provided afterwards. Uh, he said he was forced to over, he was forced to pay over you know, thirty grand over what he was asking for, and obviously you know he sets the market value for what he pays for it, and he was adamant and not agreeing with that. Um, and that's kind of where we're at in the concept we used or. You know, relatively nearby, and they're uh, all good. They're all good sales. Can they're, you show us that page? So we can yeah, let me. It's going to be in black and white, but all the that's okay. And Mr. Sterling, you understand okay. that if you did not present evidence at the informal hearing, you can't present it here unless the assessor agrees that we can consider. I understand. It. Okay. So here's the subject property right here, and then we've got a uh, number four, number two, and number three are all in his neighborhood, and we've got one over here. And we currently support the value of where he's at right now, and he's currently, yep, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. He's at 3015, and he's actually under what the, uh, we have the median at. Now the the average price for all the properties is three hundred one thousand one hundred and forty two dollars. So he's right there with where we've currently got him at. You're 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 saying three oh one five hundred. That is current his current value. Yes, right now. Okay. Yep. So right. he wasn't correct when he said you didn't you didn't use any comps in his area. We did use comps in his area. Okay. Yeah, here's number four, number two, and number three. And here's the subject property right here, all within the neighborhood. But not in Sheffield Glen. Well, we use one on the outside. That's what our uh, sales analysis team used, and we still support, currently support the value where he's at right now. Because we're also, like I said, taking into account the adjustments plus the market trend and it's currently where we're where we sit at. And I also want to mention um, may I mention one more thing? Sure. Um, he, I mentioned to him about the exemptions that were possible to get. He said that um, he didn't care to have either the homestead or the senior freeze based on what we have his current value at right now. And I mentioned those as a definitely helpful factor as time went on. Put the tax on. Right. Are you concerned about the value or the taxes? Value. Okay. Because that's all we're, we're limited to the value as well. Okay. Please tell me if I'm wrong, but the homestead exemption and the senior freeze, regardless of what we do, 
those aren't affected. So not affected. So I would say I would get those on regardless of what happens, sir. Yeah, if you can qualify for the senior free, you want to do it. How do you? Uh, how do you justify the evaluation of sixteen oh oh nine headed court? Is that one of his comps? You're asking him to justify his valuation of that comp or his use of it as a comp? Oh, my use of it. I mean, that's one of the comps that we pulled to uh, um, help support the value. Now, we have, if that's just, we have that's to. That's the only comp that, that he has in my development. And are you saying that you, you, in arriving at a value, you are limited to a neighborhood for comps? I certainly. Um, so looking at this map, you're, you're suggesting that two, four, and three aren't in your neighborhood? That is correct. They're not in the development. Okay, now wait a minute. What, what, what is know-how sold in, in the development? Are you saying there's no way to find comps? There's one comp. No, 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 no. Listen to my question. There are no sales in your development. Hypothetically, are you saying to arrive at value, no one can find a comp for that? Because it's nothing sold in the neighborhood? There's, there's things that have been sold in the neighborhood. You're not, you're not following me. Your argument is that his comps are not no, My valid. argument is this house in my development yes is listed at a fair market value of 258 yes he has me at 300 mm -hmm. how does he justify this well mike he's asking you no i am we could tell we could uh, eliminate all the other comps if we wanted to and use that comp but we can also find properties nearby that also are just like yours. They might be in a different neighborhood, but we can find them in very similar quality, age, uh, and make very minimal adjustments, and we can support that value. I understand because I, I, I was. His argument is, if it's not in your neighborhood, it can't be a comp. And I'm saying, what if there were no sales ever? How would you ever find a comp? He's not addressing that. I understand no. his, ar his argument is he's found a house and he thinks you're stuck with valuing his house like, you, like the assessors has valued that particular house. I, I, I understand that's his argument. That isn't what I was asking him, but that's okay. It's, it's okay. Okay, is there anything further anybody wants to offer or ask? So you have no answer for this? I'm, I'm, uh, why are you stuck on that? I'm, I'm trying to because understand. Because that's the closest to m the value of my house. Okay. And, and, but, but further beyond that, you're saying he can't use anything else. He could use something else. Okay. That's all. I'm, okay. In fact, you're using multiple other uh, properties to get an average or a mean correct and the thing is these are not too far away yeah they're in separate neighborhoods but the qual the qualities and the adjustments are very minimal so yeah they're in a separate neighborhood but we can still use these to support a value now if that was the only sale within the last few years we try not to go back as far as four years and three years is even a stretch but if we can find plenty of sales going back to 22 and maybe even 21 that are just like his, then we can use those. And if that was the only one within the last few years, we might have a case. But in this case, we got several properties that currently support where he's at right now. And some are higher than his and some are lower than his. Right. So that's why we have to combine everything together, market trend, everything, and come up with the median and, and a mean. And we currently have him where he needs to be at. And you're at 301500 That is correct. Okay. 
you understand what he was saying? Yes, but in, I don't necessarily agree with him. I got to. Yeah. You don't have to agree with him. Just <laughs> right. As long as you understand what he's saying. All right. I think my asking value of 280 is within reason. Okay, we're going to close the hearing on uh, BOE number 18, and Mr. Sterling, you will be getting a letter from us where we set the valuation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I would encourage you to go for those examples. Well, I will. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Any other public comments on? All right, so we've, clo we've closed BOE number 18 now. We're set for tomorrow and Thursday. That is correct. So, yes, I sent out an email this morning. Um, our decision day will be Thursday instead of Friday. Okay. If nobody received that yet, um, next week we will have for sure the 20th, most likely the 22nd. I've got to call some people to set some dates today. We'll probably have 20th and 22nd. That'll be Monday and Wednesday. And then we'll have that decision today, Friday the 24th. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll try to be on top. <laughs> <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Crawley, is your wife still doing, still doing better? She's doing, she's doing a lot better. Uh, it's all right. Quite a bit By of the pain. Way, Yes. Very, can you, uh,